Well, hello again, church family. Time for another pastor cast and time for another update in terms of where we are, what we're doing, and how things are moving forward. Uh, some of you know that this week we have already had a, an, an announcement from our governor uh, talking about some uh, things that we're going to start opening up as of July 1st and this weekend that have been pulled back. Um, our county was one of the counties that was doing poorly, and so we're being monitored. And uh, things haven't been pulled back from us right now. But in talking with the county yesterday, uh, they did say that their officials from the health department would be meeting to talk about what the governor said. And they will then be deciding what's going to happen in our county, if anything. As of right now, this second at 1.16 p.m. on Thursday, uh, we're still okay uh, to meet. Uh, nothing has changed. The county hasn't put anything out yet. But in my conversation with them yesterday, I'm anticipating that they will be addressing what the governor said uh, at some point. It could be later today. It could be tomorrow. It could be Saturday. Uh, we just don't know. They don't know. They haven't communicated um, when we will get any further information. And most importantly, whether that will mean anything is being cut back or not. Uh, meaning we can't meet at the church any longer. That would be the worst case scenario. Um, if that happens between now and Sunday, we will do our best to let you know. So please be checking your emails um, up until even Saturday night or Sunday morning. We will be sending out uh, emails to everyone that will cover the month of July uh, later this afternoon. It'll, you'll receive your emails before you actually see the pastor cast. So uh, you have, many of you have probably already read uh, what your uh, Sundays are and which service you're assigned to attend. Uh, please be very careful to pay attention to those. Um, we're, we're really trying to max out our hundred with a, just a little bit of wiggle room. So if you end up going on the wrong day or to the wrong service, that throws our numbers off. So we want to be sure that we're paying attention to when we're assigned to be here and, and at which service. So please be very careful to read your emails carefully and be, be sure you know which services you have assigned. And if you have any questions about that, um, please let me know. You can email or call and I'll respond to those as quickly as I can for you. Um, please keep in mind that with the nature of the state and the county making decisions, that anything can change just on the dime. And we don't know when any changes may come into effect or not. So just try to be patient with me and with us as we, as we try to wade through these waters and, and get through them as smoothly as possible. Um, it was great to be with you last Sunday and great to have our first uh, in-person service again. So hopefully that's not going to be pulled back and we'll be able to continue to meet uh, with a, a maximum of 100 at each service from here forward and that the only changes that will happen will be positive and we'll get to increase uh, numbers uh, over time and that we'll pretty soon we'll just be able to get back to more of a, a normal church attendance. But for the meantime, for July, we've got it scheduled out and uh, we're pretty set. Um, if you have not responded to the initial poll about what Sundays you can be here, um, then you're not included in that and in, in the email assignments because um, we can only assign people that we know are able to come. I know several of you didn't respond because you're planning not to come back uh, either now until after July or after August or later. Um, that's fine. Um, and I know that some of you have opted not to respond to the poll because you're just wanting your spots to go to other people. You're, you're content either uh, meeting in your homes with a few people gathering for that. I know some of you have been able to do that because of the social bubbles that you have, that's great. And I appreciate some of you just sacrificing for others and, and preferring other people and allowing others to come and meet. Um, that's been an encouragement to me to just see that there are many of you that are willing to do that and, and stepping into that, that way of just serving others and allowing others to participate in the services. So thank you guys for doing that. Just uh, it, it's warming to me to when I get an email or something like that that says, hey, we'll, we'll step away, we'll let others go. Um, I want you to be here, obviously, but um, thank you for, for doing that, for thinking of other people and allowing them to be served. Um, as, as last week, I want to just encourage you and remind you what to expect on Sunday. Um, as you come in, please come in the, the metal gates on each side. All of the other outside doors will be locked except for the main 
green doors in the front of the church. There will be a table with hand sanitizer out there if you'd like to use that. Um, you might want to go back and review the video, um, not just for information, but because it's a little fun to watch. I know several of you said that you watched it a multitude of times and really enjoyed it. Um, thank Ben for putting that together and for the, the, the stars that we had filming in there, uh, Tamara and, and, and Don for their service. Um, as, I, as I've tried to, to do, we're trying to keep things really simple for you so that coming to church is, is not a problem. It's not a, not a hassle. It's not a, a, a major event. Just come on in, be greeted by people, let the ushers seat you and let them kind of figure out the social distancing for you and put your family or put you in a, in a spot that's going to work uh, for us to either be social distancing um, or if you have social bubbles, remember if there are people that you're, you're meeting with regularly already, please let the ushers know that so that they can seat you together and that will help us as a church just to be able to fit people in a better way. So please keep that in mind also as you arrive. Um, remember that we, we still do need to wear our masks. Um, we still do need to practice social distancing even when we're mingling and, and whatnot, when we're outside or in the lobby and things of that nature. Um, wash your hands, use, use the hand sanitizer if, you, if you're if you so inclined to do that. Um, be reminded that uh, for a while now we, we won't have any uh, written papers that we're handing out, no bulletins, no sermon notes, no coloring pages. So the coloring page, sermon notes, they'll be emailed to you before the service. Print those out at home if you want to bring them. Or if you use an, um, a phone or a tablet for the QR codes, we will have those always in the lobby. So you can just, you can snap on that and you can have the service, uh, sermon notes on your phone or, or your tablet. So we'll, we'll keep those available, um, obviously, as long as we need to. Well, we'll, we'll keep them available for a while. Um, but utilize those as you need to. Also, um, be reminded that we will be live streaming back to normal. Um, we're, we're streaming the first service and the second service, both live. So um, if you're tuning in to watch at some point, rem be reminded that 9 o'clock there will be a live service that will start and 11.15 there will be a live service that will start. So if you're trying to hit things in between there, there may be some issues that you might have in trying to watch unless you go over uh, to like the Facebook Live page or the YouTube page where you can watch the earlier service um, once, it's, once it's finished. Um, also, just another reminder that the services are going to be a little bit shorter, about 15 minutes or so shorter, just to help accommodate with uh, being able to fellowship a little bit after the service um, and still do our disinfecting and have our disinfecting teams work uh, to clean up uh, before the next service arrives. And then also to just be able to, to have enough time for people to get in and out so that people can arrive for the second hour uh, early as we're asking everybody to come early. Um, to the services so that we can just do our seating in a better way. Last week went really well. The ushers had a, had a, a real smooth, uh, smooth operation with uh, getting people. And what was really helpful to that was people arriving early. So please continue to do that as long as we need to be doing uh, the social distancing. Um, arriving early will be really helpful to the ushers and to the rest of us as we want to be able to start the services on time without uh, a lot of people still rushing in and, and coming and trying to get seated. So please keep that in mind also. If you can arrive uh, 10 minutes early, that's great. 15 minutes is fine. Even five minutes early would be helpful. Um, just please try to make that a, a good habit for us to be in during this time or while we have to seat people. Um, again, just a reminder, we won't be taking attendance, um, so you don't have to check in at a table. Um, if this is going to be your first Sunday or the Sunday after that is your first Sunday, you don't have to look for a table to sign in, nothing like that. Um, we're not taking temperatures, so if you're not feeling well at home, if you have any doubts, take your temperature at home. Uh, just check yourself. If you're not feeling well, just stay home. Um, we just want to take any risks. And we just want you to be healthy. We want people around you to be healthy, healthy and everybody just to feel comfortable that people are coming and people feel good about being here. So just uh, we trust you to do that and to monitor your health and to make wise decisions for you and for your family. Um, be reminded that um, we still will not have nursery or uh, children's education uh, classes available. Those aren't open to us yet. Um, so families, if you come, you need to sit together and the lobby will be reserved uh, only for uh, moms or dads who need to bring their kids out. Uh, please don't plan to just sit in the lobby. 
um, to help with social distancing or something like that. We want to keep that available only for moms and dads who have to bring their, their young children out and uh, keep them out there for a little while. Um, in light of that, uh, just so you know, if you, if you weren't here last week, uh, the TVs that we have out in the lobby are not functioning right now. We're doing some changes with our, our cameras and our cabling, and they're not connected right now. You'll hear audio out there, but you won't be able to watch the sermon on the television. So just keep that in mind if you do need to step out. Also, I um, wanted to really give a thank you to the, the, our first two disinfecting teams that were, were uh, working last Sunday. Um, they just knocked things out of the park. It was amazing. And uh, for me, it was helpful to, to know that the disinfecting process will be actually really pretty quick, probably take about 10 minutes with the amount of people that we have at most probably. And so um, uh, there will be an email that will also go out to those of you who, who signed up to be uh, helping with the disinfecting. Um, if you signed up and you don't get an email, don't worry. We had way too many of you sign up. And to me, that was, again, just a great encouragement. Over Easily over 100 people signed up to say that you're willing to help with uh, the disinfecting after each service. We don't need that many people. Um, I'm going to have between 8 and 10 that are just going to help out uh, each Sunday after each service. Um, the little caddies are down there with the instructions. It's a very simple process of just wiping things down and getting things ready for the next service. So thank you to all of you who signed up. Not all of you will need to serve. And uh, everybody that, <clears throat> excuse me, everybody that will receive an email, uh, you'll just need to do it one time uh, during this month of July. And uh, we'll just uh, keep everything nice and clean for everyone. So thank you guys for your willingness to serve in regards to that. And then I also want to remind you of what I reminded you last week that's most important. Um, as you come here to, to, um, to meet together, um, two things to keep in mind. One is just to remember to keep preferring one another. Uh, keep serving one another. Keep one another's encouragement in mind. Um, we want to be uh, in a position where we are building up the body of Christ. And we're not coming in with our, our complaints and our grumblings and can you believe this and the governor said this and the county this. We're not here for that. And we're not here to, to battle our different perspectives and our different views on a Sunday morning about, about what we should do, what we should think, how we should respond, how we shouldn't respond. That's not what we're here for. What we want to be here for is to encourage, to prefer, to love, care for one another. So keep that attitude in mind. It was, it was really great to see that really happening on Sunday with people. And just want to encourage you to continue to keep that kind of mindset. And secondly, just to remember why we come here. We come here to worship God. He is our focus. He is our reason. He is the one who deserves all of the glory and all of the praise that we can give to Him. So as we walk in those doors as a, as a church family together, in addition to wanting to encourage one another, we want to have that mindset of we are here to worship God. That is our purpose for gathering, is to have that that one focus of we want to give our attention, our praise, um, our worship to Him, the one who is worthy of all of our praise. That means we have to have a right attitude, one of humility, one of submission, uh, one of just love and encouragement, uh, and one of wanting to hear from God and wanting to praise God as we, as we sing. It's a little different kind of singing in masks last week. I'm sure some of you felt that. Uh, but as, as Tony said and as, as Tom shared, it's really good to hear voices again in the sanctuary. Um, I know that Michael and the worship team were uh, very encouraged to hear more than just them uh, after these three months. And it was good to hear voices. So bring your full voice and just plow through that mask with your voice and, and sing till your heart's content to the glory of God. All right, so that, that pretty much will kind of catch us up and prepare us for what's to come. Just remember, emails will be coming out. Um, they've, by this time, they've already come out to you. So be watching for your emails that come in from the church. Um, check your spam folder, check your junk folder in case they get sent there by mistake. And uh, just be sure that if you have any questions, you have anything you need to know, feel free to contact me, contact the office, and we will be very glad to help you out. But um, hopefully, we will be able to continue with where we're at, meeting through the month of July, as we've planned, and that things will only begin to get better and we won't get things pulled back. Um, if there's nothing that's come out in the next day or two, I just encourage you, please be praying that our county wouldn't pull things back and that we would continue to get to at least stay at where we're at and eventually be able to move forward in terms of how many people we can have back here at the church. Please do be praying for that. I would encourage you to, to join with me. I know others are praying for that as well. Um, but pray that, that we won't be restricted any further and that we can continue to meet as we are. 
Um, lastly, I just want to I want to share with you uh, a little bit from the scriptures and encourage you uh, during this time. One of the things that um, many of you um, have thought about, have commented about, have asked questions about, is how do we respond right now um, with what's going on in our culture? Um, there's there's so many different things, so many different voices, so many different um, uh, things that people are, are yelling about or talking about or questioning about or, or wondering about. Um, and a lot of those voices are loud. A lot of those voices um, sometimes aren't real kind. And as Christians, it's important that we know how to think and how to respond to all the different t things that are going on uh, culturally here in just our neighborhoods, our countries, on our social media pages and things like that. So I want to just encourage you from the Word. Paul wrote this to the, to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, starting in verse 3. Let me, let me read these words for you. He says, For though we walk in the flesh, we are not waging war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but have divine power to destroy strongholds. We destroy arguments and every lofty opinion raised against the knowledge of God and take every thought captive to obey Christ, being ready to punish every disobedience when your obedience is complete. Look at what is before your eyes. If anyone is confident that he is Christ's, let him remind himself that just as he is Christ's, so also are we. Now, now Paul was in a, in a situation where he was having to defend himself against those who were saying things about him that were not true and saying things about him that were, that were tearing him down. One of the things that Paul reminds the Corinthians and, and that God reminds us is that we're, we're, not, we're not battling against people. We're not battling against flesh and bone that from Paul's day prior and from Paul's day forward and until Jesus comes again, there is spiritual battle that has been and is and will be happening always all around us all the time. And so everything that we look at in the culture that's happening deals in one way or another with spiritual warfare. And what I want to encourage you with is this, to try to look at all of these things, all the questions that you may have, all the points of confusion that may be coming to you, is try to look at them very simply through the lens of Scripture. If, if God is the source of all wisdom and knowledge, which the Bible tells us He is, and if the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and if we say that the Bible is our authority, and that this Word of God is what we submit to, Paul here is saying that we need to have all of our thoughts, every thought taken captive to obey Christ. And what that means for us is that if we have, if we have things coming at us from the culture, what we need to be able to do is examine those things in the light of Scripture and then respond to those things in accordance with Scripture in regards to what does the Bible say. And sometimes that's a good question just to start with, is if you hear something stated in the culture, just immediately ask, well, what does the Bible say about that? And ask yourself, is that man's wisdom speaking or is that God's wisdom speaking? Because that's an important distinction for us to make. Paul earlier in his writings to the Corinthians said that the, the, wis the, the foolishness of God is wiser than the wisdom of man. The worst that God could have, which he doesn't have a worst, but the, the, the lowest wisdom that God would have would be way better than the best that man could offer. And so we, are, we would be foolish to just simply um, accept man's wisdom and man's thoughts and man's ideas if they're not in line with Scripture. And so that's one of the best ways for us to very simply address and look at different things that people say is what does the Bible say about that? How does Scripture address that? Does Scripture address that? And then respond accordingly with, with wanting to live in a Christ-like way. And if the world is out there saying that you should do this or you shouldn't do that, well, examine that with what Scripture says. And if Scripture agrees with that, then by all means we should obey. 
But if scripture disagrees or even is in opposition to what is being said out in the world, then we should not listen to that. We should obey God and not man. Now remember, anyone who is not a believer is, is as the Bible describes, they're, in some ways they're deceived. They, they don't understand truth. They don't understand knowledge. And so their ability to even speak truthfully about things is going to be limited in some ways. Can the world say right things? Yes. Can the world say just things? Yes, absolutely. God has put knowledge of good and evil in us. The Bible tells us that. The um, Bible has put in man a sense of justice because we're created in God's image. And so God is just, and so we, we want to see justice happen. We want to see righteousness abound. So that's in people as part of being image bearers of God. But the world does not have the knowledge of God and the fear of God that they are operating under. So a lot of times we can be confused because we can, we can hear things that you know, so, so-called experts might even be saying out in the world, and it just doesn't seem to line up with Scripture. So I want to encourage you to be very careful to go to the Word and make decisions based on what the Word clearly says. Make decisions and, and make choices based on what the Word clearly says. And if there are any points of confusion, I want to encourage you not to hesitate to speak about that with others. Speak about that with your pastors. Send us emails. Give us phone calls. Um, I'm, I'm always happy to speak about Christ and culture and, and how do these things uh, interact. How do, we, how do we seek to understand culture in the light of what the scriptures teach us, and what, in light of what Jesus has, has said. So remember that the enemy, the devil, he wants people to be confused. He wants people to be deceived. Um, Jesus calls him the father of lies, that that is in his nature, that if he's speaking, he's lying. And so if, if he has voices in the world, which he does, deception and lies come from there. So we have to be very careful about how do we even accept uh, truth from voices that we hear in the world that are, are not in line with Scripture. So it's, it's, it's a, sometimes a very complex, a seemingly complex um, thing to do to be able to address that. But what I want to encourage you to do is, is simplify that. Don't let it be so complex. Grab your Bible and see what it says about things that people are saying. And if you find support for things that people are saying, then you're standing in a good place. But if you choose to believe things and to, and to expound on things and to promote things that are not scriptural, then the likelihood is that you're not standing with God for Christ if you're not standing on His Word. And I just want to caution you about that. Because as people of God, we are to be standing for Him first and foremost. And one of the things that we're even seeing, and I know a lot of you are seeing this, is you're seeing a lot of conflict between believers even, between Christians. And sometimes that comes because some are listening to the world only, and they're, not, and they're not listening to Scripture. That's where some of that comes from. Some of it comes from people trying to blend the world's wisdom, wisdom with God's wisdom. And that usually doesn't work out very well either. So we have to be very careful to be people who are committed to the Word of God and that we're, we're weighing everything else that we're hearing and seeing and, 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 being, and, and what's being talked about by what God's Word has taught us. Now, I know that the Word of God doesn't address every single issue that we have in our culture today, but by direct teaching or principle, there's always something here that is going to apply in every situation that we can find ourselves in. Solomon told us in Ecclesiastes, there's, there's nothing new under the sun. God's not surprised by anything that might come up in, all, in our culture. He's not surprised. And He's given us adequate information. And, and we're foolish if we believe that the Bible's not adequate to, to, to fill the needs that we have of, of understanding the problems of our day. The Bible is adequate. God's Word is enough. And we need to be people that stand on that. So I encourage you, as, as Paul said, strive to take every thought captive to the obedience of Christ. He said that is where we, we tear down strongholds. That is where we, we end arguments that come from uh, things other than Scripture, from man's ideas or from Satan's teachings that come through people. So be practicing that 
meditate on the scriptures, read the scriptures, seek to apply the scriptures, and when you hear things, weigh them out by the scriptures. Let the word of God speak to you. Let the word of God lead you and guide you into knowledge and understanding and truth. God has told us that he is that. He is knowledge. He is wisdom. He is truth, and he's given it to us. So we need to take advantage of that. And we need to be, as Jesus said, as innocent as doves, but as wise as serpents. And part of what makes us wise is submitting ourselves, submitting our thoughts to what God has taught us. So I just want to leave you with that today and encourage you to be people of the Word who are committed to the Word of God and what it says, and that we weigh out the voices that we hear that come from outside by what the Scriptures say. There, are, there is truth that is spoken but there's also falsehood, and, and sometimes there's blendings of truth and falsehood. The best ways for us to discern what is right is by going to the Scriptures. Not trusting me, not trusting a, another pastor, not trusting a, an author, not trusting this person or that person, person, trusting the Scriptures. And what does the Bible tell us? That's where we need to land. That's what brings us peace. That's what gives us hope. That's where our comfort comes from. That's the message we need to carry out to people, is that we have an answer to the problems of our culture. We have an answer to the problems of the age. That answer is Jesus Christ, the gospel of his life, his death, his resurrection, his defeat of death and sin, and the hope that he brings by, by offering eternal life to all those who would freely accept that gift. That's the best that we have to offer. That's the only thing we have to offer. So. Bathe yourself in the wisdom of God. Bathe yourself in the Word. And let that be the filter through which you examine what's going on in our culture today and the world around us. Love all you guys. Hope to see many of you more through this month. And uh, keep praying that we don't get closed down anymore. Good night. God bless.